Let's go to our man, Mr. Tim Ord, folks, as we do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, you get hold of Tim every trading day at Ord, R-D, hyphen, oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen, oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, it's a wild market out here. Yeah. Um, that, I guess we, we can take a look at the charts, kind of see where we are. That's a beautiful thing. I'm ready. I get the first one up, Tim. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, this is this is what I kind of been um, going off. It works. I've been doing this for years, but anyhow, the top window is a ten day trend. Yes. And and right below that, uh, the SPY. But anyhow, in a nutshell, uh, trend readings of one point two or higher are usually forms of lows. And so that's two weeks of of pretty bearish trend readings. And right now, when I made this chart, it was one oh seven. Okay. So. Uh, I have the pink areas across the chart showing times when the 10-day trend and actually the 21-day trend both got in bullish territories. So that's when both of them got above 1.2. Uh, the 21-day trend usually picks out the longer-term bottoms, but the 10-day trend can pick out the longer-term bottoms and actually even the short-term bottoms. So I rely on that the most. And so in the blue area right now, you got the 21-day trend at 104, which is almost neutral, and you got the 10-day trend at 107. So there's really no panic here, even though the market's declined. Uh, we're not to a level that, to a point where there's a worthwhile bottom forming. So uh, short term, you know, when, when everybody's exiting, the, you know, the uh, – door, I guess, the, uh, when everybody's selling, yes. is a perfect time to look to get in the market. We're not even close to it right now. So uh, even though the market could bounce short term, doesn't have to, we're not to, uh, we're not, have not reached a fear level yet uh, to drive the trend up to 1.2. So Right. Let, let me uh, ask you, we got a couple of tigers asking about that. We know on, on a two-day trend, we're going to be over three. So that's a little fear there, right? Yeah. Yeah. That means uh, uh, that that could be a short term bounce uh, on a near term basis here. So, and actually, I went short yesterday, and the trend was one point two two and three hundred sixty seven down tick readings, and the market didn't bounce. I thought today would be an up day, right. and uh, the market didn't bounce. Uh, so, but you get two days of trend over three a lot of times, especially in uptrends, it's a lot of times you'll get a bounce. So it could be just whipping back and forth here. I'm not really bearish on a bigger, longer term. I think this is a, basically a correction or an uptrend. So we'll, we'll get to a level probably where the, both the 10 day, 21 day trend is probably above 1.2. And this, this, this two day trend, cause it's only two days, you got two days of panic, and it only may mean you know a one or two day bounce. Uh, so, it, it bring it on! Be a long, that, that'd be so uh, cool. It's the same. Do so. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so, great having a two way market, Tim. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, kind of you guys. That's, that's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. So that's what happens in trading range. So I don't think this is a big smash uh, to new lows in the market. I think this is just a. Uh, you know, it's going to whip everybody silly probably over the next couple of weeks or months or whatever. So yes, but, no, it, get, I, it, get, it gets uh, people nervous, which we, which has to happen, right? That's the that's, that's the right. bottom well, line. Exactly right. That's a good point. It has to happen. If right. it doesn't happen, right. that's it, it'll happen until everybody <laughs> thinks, no, you know, I log it up. You know, I'm out of here. <laughs> and when everybody says I'm out of here, that's when you step in. Exactly. So, exactly. So, yeah. So, yeah. But here, here's some clues. Let's go to chart two real quick. Okay. Uh, hey, we're running out of time. No, don't worry. We get plenty of time. We get, it's only yeah. I mean, that might be a first segment, but don't worry about that. See that you got that down pat. <laughs> That's all right. You stay right there, man. Tim Lloyd, Tom right. O'Brien. We do appreciate the growl on a problem with us out here, folks. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading down six thirty nine. Nasdaq's off four fifty eight. S and P's are off ninety two. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate the growl and the problem with us out here. We have the Dow down at 620. NASDAQ's up 447. S&Ps are up 90. And I have the second shot up here, Tim. Actually, you know, the two-day trend, I went, yesterday it was 1.24. And we're, right, we're at uh, 1.6, approximately 1.60 right now. So we're still below three. 
So the more degree, uh, this is a two-day trend, more degree below three, the less chance that you'll have a three-day trend. Uh, a bounce here short term so so uh, let me ask you so the close here you had 1.2 you had 1.24 yesterday yeah uh, i got 1.62 interesting okay uh, where, where'd you get yours at bloomberg yeah uh, they move uh, around though i know let me see what dan has one second dan what did you have yesterday um yeah and it, it's interesting how these things different you know, yeah, Dan had 1.62 yesterday, too, though. I don't know. But, but yeah, but if he's Bloomberg, then you, you both have the same. I got mine off of stock charts. Yeah. And that's yeah. The, the one I use. I got it. Okay, so, cool. That's I got it. And that's what Tim so just said there. That's what, important. Stay consistent to the one. Yeah, that's no matter what it is. If you stay consistent, you're 10 times better off. Right. All right. Right. Yeah. yeah. What well, what was what's your reading right now or do you have one? Yeah, no, I do. Uh right now we we are at 1.48. Okay, I have 1.59. Okay. Yeah, you can see this. Uh, that's closer. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know about your your guys but my comes up about 1. Point, or 2.8 or something thereabouts. Yeah. Uh, so um you know, the more, uh, so I don't know, but if they rally here on the close and that trend drops down again, you know, exactly, may no, not exactly. Pass. but right. anyhow, let's look at chart two. Okay. I have it. All right. Chart two, the top window is that it's a weekly chart. It's the national association of active investors, managers, exposure index. And back on July 1st, we had 103.63, I think. Uh, I forgot what the high was. This is on weekly charts. Yeah, I think the high came in what July twelfth or something. Yes. So, but this is a weekly chart. So, um, but anyhow, what I was trying to point out on this chart, when the exposure index right now, as of I guess on a weekly time frame, uh, this is updated every day. So we're coming in approximately about well, eighty four right now, but. Yes. Previous lows happen, worthwhile lows happen when this index got below or got at that point sixty uh, percent or lower. Okay, and that's all those 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 dots. Those kind I of see a, them. Yep, the dots on the blue right, line, the, right? Yeah, right. So I went back and looked. You know, we, we got a top, which I marked with red lines, and what was the next bottom? Well, that, those are the red dots, or they're not dots. I see. I dots. see. Interesting. Right. Wow. So. So we're, you know, at least we have to get down to point six. In other words, uh, when the National Association of Visual Investors get to 60% invested or less, it, which is kind of a similar indicator. Right. You know, uh, so when you get 6% or less, that's a, that's a sentiment sign that, yeah, you're probably getting close to a low. Right now, they're still in the 80%. Thereabouts. This is cool, man. So, yeah, right. Yeah, so so I'm I'm trying to figure out. You know, there isn't enough fear in the market. I put it that way. Yep. So when you're, and when you're looking at this, another kind of. Oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead, Tim. All right. Uh, so the next chart uh, is chart three, and this is kind of another sentiment chart. So we're looking at uh, professional money managers are not quite right because yep. there's not enough fear in those guys. And this uh, the bottom window. Is the or is the yeah the equity put call ratio readings, and the bottom window is a twenty one day, next window up is a five day, so five days a little bit more responsive, uh, but both those need to get around point the bottom one which is twenty one days of equity. In other words, how many people are it kind of measures the uh, the measures the individual investors put buying and call buying. Yes, so the more put buying they have. The more bearish they are on the market, right? They're the they're the best counter traders you can get. So when they get on on really on the bearish side, you want to go bullish. When they get around the bullish side, you want to go bearish. Yes. So right now, the twenty one day, which is basically what that's a whole month. That's point six right now. It needs to get up to about point seven. Okay. And the five day, which is basically a week, and then you get around point eight, and they're point six nine. So. And this is as of today, so they're not bearish here either. So, uh, to me, you know, you want to short every rally. I don't know every rally, but no, I'm with uh, you. Yeah, not, right, right, right. 
Yeah, yeah so there, there's, it's not right for a bottom yet. So let's look at the bigger picture. Okay. I'm trying to get everything in here. Uh, this, okay, page for, uh, page for chart four is I bring this up all the time. Uh, this is a monthly chart. This is the uh, SPX in the middle window. The bottom window is the SPX, SPX VIX ratio. And the month ended yesterday. Yes. And, and the SV did close. Uh, July did close above June. So he made higher highs and higher closes. Well, the ratio made lower highs, lower closes. Look at that. That's what happens at yep. uh, worthwhile tops. That so was substantial, too. Uh, I, I have a line, kind of a blue line, if you go to the current time frame. I have a blue line grow, growing across that chart, which is some previous highs we had in, you know, basically, basically looks like about January, February, March period. Yes. Which is around 5250. Uh, that's kind of a sport area. So that's kind of a, a, it was a base back then. And we finally broke through it and we may come back down to it. And that's what I'm thinking. That's what may happen Okay, in, in, uh, in the coming weeks. So let's take a look at the short term and see if that makes any sense. Okay. So that's chart five. I have it. So, uh, anyhow, the blue area, you know, actually I went back. Before, I thought we might bottom around, you know, the 530, 540 area. Well, the, the chart on the monthly chart just quite a bit of sport at 5250, which is uh, 52 or 525 on the SPY. Yes. So I drug that blue area down a little bit more. And there's actually down, there's quite a few trend readings down that region. So I think there's this whole, there's a support or there's panic area between five. Five two five all the way up to five four five. That's where all the the trend readings uh, reach yeah. levels that that have reached panic. And so far, the ten day hasn't reached panic yet. But I, I think we may go actually down to five two five. You know, it's so cool, uh, Tim. If you if you look at look at the trading day from uh, the eleventh, no, the thirty first of May. That's at that's five two seven. Okay. And that's the last day that we had huge volume on the way up. Isn't that wild? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Dow's down 590. NASDAQ off 420. S&P's off 84. Tim and I come right back, folks. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. I'm on the fifth chart, Tim. All right. Is there something else, too? Look at the... The bottom window. Okay. Um, the uh, that's just the VIX straight out. Yes. And if you notice, the S and P's has not broke below the previous low we had here, end of July. You know, say like like about July twenty fifth or whatever yes. that is. That low we had one two three uh, three what six days ago. Yes. Yeah. Look. Right, so we're up higher than that low right now as we're as we're talking. I can see that. Yeah. The VIX. Uh, and if you look at the VIX, the VIX is higher than that low. Right. So the VIX is making a higher high, but the SPX is not. Or the, yeah, the, the SPX has not made a lower low yet. So the VIX leads the SPX. That suggests that the last low we had on the SP will be broken. Now, for instance, if the SPs were making a lower low today compared to a, you know a week ago, yes, and the and the VIX was making a, a lower high, that would be bullish. You get what I'm saying? What a cool ratio. Yes, I do, Tim. And and folks, remember right. that if you're in your car, this program's archived. And remember that we also take this segment and we put it out separately on YouTube so you can just listen to this whole segment because that right there is huge info, man. Yeah, I get it. Right. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring it, but at some point we're going to break last week's flow. Yes. And, and maybe that'd be good because, you know, the faster we get panicked in the market, the faster we'll get to a low. Right. But, you know, this thing just drags around. And we're starting to get panicked, you know, a lot better than we did a couple of weeks ago. Or actually a couple of weeks ago, we were still going up. But but uh, so I don't know what's, what's going to happen. But short term, I bet we break last week's low. And we may get down to that, you know, the monthly chart says we may get to five, you know, 525. Yes. So, uh, if that's the case, then that's when everything should really blow out. You know, the the uh, equity put call ratio readings should get up to right. 
you know, point eight or higher. The those investment managers should be below sixty percent invested. You know, everybody should be running for the hills and stuff. Exactly. And uh, and so so we'll pick this low out as as you know time pushes forward here. All right. And as and Tim's saying, agree, folks, yeah, if we do it right, nobody will agree with us. No, no, I know. And as Tim's saying here, if you meander around here, folks, okay, that's the building cause part for the next leg down. That's what's so dangerous. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you either got to get the flush. And if you don't get the flush and you start moving around, that's like, okay, you know, it's building confidence. It's building pressure. It's building cause. And that cause, because as Tim is explaining, that that low hasn't really been touched, tested yet, that's where that thing comes. So it's pretty cool really getting your head wrapped around that. Nice. Yeah. So, okay. But yeah, so we got a lot going on S and P. So I don't think this is, you know, a bottom. I mean, uh, it, it could be. It just could be a mush market. As far as the short position I got on yesterday. Yeah. You know, if if I get short term panic here, I'm out again because I think the market is not going to go have a deep retracement. I think the market is just going to bounce around. And if you notice, uh, I have a gap. If you look at the chart five. Yes. Towards the top of the chart, there, I got you know a gap up there. You know we haven't touched that gap yet, so we'll go up and touch it. You know I don't know when, or maybe you know we find we get through the final bombs, we'll go up and hit it. But I'm thinking we we go down to five twenty five, and we rally up to five sixty. You know up, you know and can't get through it, come back down. So I'm thinking this whole thing is just going to be a sideways trading range, but time will tell. Yep, for so. sure. Now, Tim, when you're talking about the gap, are you talking about the gap right from the very top of the S of the spy? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, so that that number that would be uh, well, yeah, five sixty two. Eighteen is is the bottom of that gap. Okay, cool. Okay, well, man, that'll be cool. Yeah, so. Man, if this is a trading yeah. range, we're going to be in heaven, man. <laughs> yeah, but if you know yesterday's, uh, if you compare the volume uh, yesterday, yes, co compared to that gap we had down. Last week, well, actually last Wednesday, we gapped down. Right. I took those. I took all the shaded areas off because the car was getting too busy. Yes. Man, we tested that gap yesterday on lighter volume. That's one of the reasons why I went short. Exactly. So, exactly. So, so, so I thought they were going to try rally today. Then uh, they tried off this morning, couldn't do it. But again, the VIX is hit. Well, you hit it. High. You hit it perfectly, getting shot. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the market gives you clues if you know what to look for. So, anyhow, um, let's go to chart six. Okay. This is kind of short, uh, short term. I only got two charts on it. Not a lot to say, but other than I think S&P's or the GDX may halfway. F I think GDX will outperform the S&P's. But if you have really strong down days, I think GDX could be affected. But yes. in general, we're in an uptrend here. Uh the bottom window is a monthly cumulative advanced decline. It gave a buy signal on May 31st. I also have a weekly uh, cumulative uh, advanced decline. It gave a buy signal on March 18th. And both of them right now, the weekly and the monthly, is on a buy signal. And the top window is a monthly cumulative up-down volume. gave a buy signal on May 31st. The weeklies gave a buy signal on, on March 18th also. Uh, the weeklies... The minimum, once they flip to bullish, the minimum rally they have, uh, the, yeah, the minimum rally that has occurred was one and a half years. So if you, uh, you get triggered on March 18th, that would imply the market will rally at minimum one and a half years from that signal, which would put you in September of 2025. Actually, the same signal works on the monthly chart, which is a minimum year and a half. If you do that signal, that would take you to, uh, uh, November of 2025. We'll take that. So we got at least, yeah, we'll take that. So we both got, you know, you got a year and a half of rally. Not every day is going to be an up day, but in general, this market's going to go higher. So well, you know, it's cool. It's so uh, cool today. I mean, for a really, you know, this is a this is a bad market out here today. And the GDX, Tim. Okay, so we're down 65 cents, but check it out. You're down 65 cents with only 14 million shares, man. Which is so cool. I mean, pff, that's like a joke. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's just the markets. Uh, yeah, it's just yesterday we actually had a good day, kind of a sign of a strength day, kind of. But yeah, we're down today, so. Um, but minimally you know, compared to the market, right? I mean, do you know what yeah, I mean? Minimum is a year and a half. Uh, so we're we're going to you know 
we're going to go on for a while. I was going to show the uh, bullish percent index for the gold miners index. Good. Okay. And and uh, I think for, uh, like ninety one percent are on buy signals, which is okay. Okay. But when it gets up to ninety five percent or higher, you got to look out. Okay. So, uh, but so anyhow, yeah, about ninety percent of the stocks on the gold miners index are on buy signals. So you got a strong market. You just don't want to get too enthusiastic about it. So right. you don't want one hundred percent of the stocks on buy signals because if you do, you're going to get a correction. Right. So, but right. you know, it's still okay. I mean, it's getting up there, but. Here's a here's a one for kind of uh, chart number seven. Yes, I have it. Clues, yeah. Um, of of when probably some worthwhile highs will form. Not a top of any consequence, but the middle window is the weekly XAU gold ratio, and above that is the RSI for that ratio. Okay. This is on a weekly time frame, and so when the that. RSI for the weekly XAU gold ratio gets up around 70 or higher. Normally, which is our little red lines across the chart, you can get consolidations that may last several weeks. So, something to look for. Well, listen, man, Tim, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much for the great education. Look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday. All right. Talk to you next week. Have a great one, Have man. A Have a safe one. Love you guys.